Hi guys, welcome back. We're going to take a look at section 20.7 on two different classes of molecules called alkenes and alkynes. Here are alkenes. There are three different examples. The first example is ethene, the second example is propene, and the third example is butene. So what we want to figure out is based on these pictures, what's an alkene? How is an alkene different from an alkane, right? Well, the first thing you notice is that alkenes always have double bonds, and that's the difference right there. So an alkane is a saturated hydrocarbon. Saturated means there are only single bonds. Hydrocarbon means the molecule is built out of only hydrogen and carbon. Alkenes are different. Alkenes are still hydrocarbons, only hydrogen and carbon, but alkenes are not saturated. Alkenes are unsaturated because of these double bonds. So the moment you put a double bond into a molecule, it stops being an alkane and becomes an alkene. There is no methene, and the reason there's no methene is that to make a double bond, you have to have at least two carbons, and methane only has a single carbon. So the smallest alkene is called ethene. Instead of propane, we have propene, and instead of butane, we have butene, and that pattern continues. Instead of pentane, you'd have pentene, hexane becomes hexene, and so on, pardon me, and so forth. Another difference is that the generic formula for alkanes was CnH to the 2n plus 2. The generic formula for alkenes is Cn. H2n. And you can see that's the case. If we have two carbons, n is equal to 2, that means we have to have four hydrogens, H2n, right? If we have Cn, three carbons, so that n is equal to 3, H to the 2n, well, 2 times 3 is 6. And sure enough, there are six hydrogens on there. You can't see the other one. It's hiding back there. What else can I tell you? You might say, okay, Cato, so this is ethene. Why are there three different pictures of one molecule? Well, this is called a structural formula. It shows you the kind of atoms involved, and it shows you the kinds of bonds involved. This is called a ball and stick model. It shows you the kinds of atoms and the kinds of bonds involved. Technically, it's giving you one other piece of information. You can see right here there's a division between the black hydrogen and the white, pardon me, the black carbon and the white hydrogen. Technically, this, this picture is showing us that the electrons are shared just a little closer to the carbon, but I'm, I'm not going to test you on that. That's kind of a detail. Finally, this is still ethene. This is called a space filling model. And this is showing the relative sizes of the atoms. Here we have no sense of the size of carbon and hydrogen. Here we have a moderate sense. The carbon sphere is a little bit bigger than the hydrogen sphere. And here we very much understand that carbon is a much larger atom than hydrogen is. So these are alkenes. Alkenes are... Um, well, they're, in some ways, they're a staple of modern industry because we use alkenes to make plastics. Um, there's a little bit of technical language involved that we'll get into in section 16 of chapter 20. But for the time being, these are still just ethenes, right? Here's ethene, here's ethene, here's ethene. This is the space filling model. This is the ball and stick model. This is the structural model. Catalyst just means some kind of an atom or molecule that's or something that's going to make the reaction happen faster. And what this is showing is that you can take ethene. I know it says ethylene down here, but those two words mean the same thing. That's a little bit confusing, and I don't know why it's like that. But ethylene and ethene are two words for the same thing. What this slide is showing is that if you take multiple molecules of ethene, you apply a catalyst to bond them all together, you end up with polyethylene, right? Many ethylenes. One thing to notice, the double bond present in the ethene or ethylene disappears over here, and 
uh, rather than each carbon being double bonded to another carbon, you can see each carbon is bonded to a carbon on the left and another carbon on the right side. And so this process converts an alkene into an alkane. Here's the ball and stick picture, and here's the space filling picture. But polyethylene is a very common plastic. And that's kind of the idea here is that chemists are interested in alkenes because they're dead useful for building things. Here's a slide that demonstrates that. You've maybe heard of some of these different kinds of plastics. This is what they're used for. They're all recyclable. Why? The reason that it's valuable to recycle these is that, let's go back and take a look here. These molecules are very stable. Remember, carbon is small. It forms strong, durable bonds, which makes these molecules stable, which means they stick around for a long, long time. You can put this into a landfill, and it's not going to degrade very quickly. right? And so that's the reason that we recycle so many of these plastics, is that carbon bond simply doesn't break down quickly or easily. Another reason I wanted to show you this slide is just to show you the E-N-E -E endings, right? Alkenes are always ending in ene. So here's an ene, here's an ene, here's an ene, here's an ene. And many of these you've heard of before. Polystyrene is something you've probably heard of. Polypropylene is something you've probably heard of. Polyethylene is the one you just saw. And certainly these are all familiar materials to us. This is the final slide in this section. We have a whole different kind of molecule now. These are alkynes. Alkanes had single bonds. Alkenes have double bonds. Alkynes now have triple bonds. Let me talk about that just real briefly. The single bond is the longest. Double bonds are a little bit shorter. Triple bonds are the shortest. Triple bonds have the most energy stored in them. Double bonds have a little bit less energy. Single bonds have the least energy. There is no methane, right? There's methane, but there's no methene. And for the exact same reason, there's no methane. You cannot make a triple bond with just one carbon. So in the same way that the smallest alkene was ethene, the smallest alkyne is called ethyne, or acetylene. Now this is confusing because you just learned that ENE -E means an alkene. I'm not sure what the logic is behind this name, but technically it's ethyne. If you walk into Mr. Spanos's metal shop, though, there is an oxyacetylene torch. The idea is that if you combine this molecule with oxygen, you can release all the energy stored in this triple bond. In fact, you can think of this triple bond as a compressed spring. And if you can find some way to release the compression, you get all that energy back. The spring will suddenly expand, right? An oxyacetylene torch is quite something. If you haven't seen it, ask Mr. Spanos about it and see if, you know, if he'll show it to you or not. But it, 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 it cuts, so to speak, or operates at very high temperature. I don't even know what it is, but you know, two and a half, three thousand 3,000 degrees hot enough that I have seen it melt salt before. This is just another example of a molecule that has single bonds, double bonds, and triple bonds. Because of the triple bond, this molecule would be considered an alkyne. If you took away that triple bond, then the molecule would be considered an alkene. And if you took away the double bond and the triple bond, then the molecule would be considered an alkane. I think that's where we'll stop for now. So. Alkenes, alkynes. One final thing I do have to say. The generic formula for an alkane is C to the N, H to the 2N plus 2. Generic formula for an alkene, C to the N, H to the N. Generic formula for an alkyne is C to the N, H to the 2N minus 2.